Hey guys, this is Nick Wheeler with Wheeler Custom Knives here and this is going to be hand sanding 101 for knife makers from the perspective if you were a student in my shop. So it's going to be starting off, uh, you know, assuming you don't have a lot of experience, uh, it's going to try to help get you started uh, on hand sanding a, a knife blade and maybe, you know, give you some direction so that you can end up with a, you know, a result that you're happy with. Uh, before I do any of that, I just want to say, you know, I always end up with people who make comments like, well, I have to do this, or I have to get that, or I don't really want to use that. You know, you don't have to do anything but die and stink, and not necessarily in that order. So, you know, you sure as hell don't have to take any advice that I'm offering. I'm just throwing it out there for, you know, people to take a look at. If it helps you, that's great. You know, um, you know, if, if you don't want to use it, that's your call. So, uh, you know, with that said, let's get started sanding the blade. Okay, so what are you going to need to get started? Obviously, you're going to need need some sandpaper, some abrasives. Uh, you know, if, if you're willing to, to do do an online order, uh, the the red line Ranawet from SuperGrit.com, I think is one of the best papers out there. Um, I've been using it for a long time now, and, and I really like it. However, uh, if we're coming off the grinder at a really, really coarse grit, the co the coarser grits in this do not wrap around a sanding bar real well. Um, and if you if you're not really wanting to to have to order it like that, uh, you can get like the Norton Premium like this. 3M makes some similar stuff. You can get those at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, another <coughs> little plug for Super Grit. Um, I really, uh, I really like the PSA stuff that they have in, in the coarser grits. This is a 150. This is actually from them. This is a Gator grit. This is a seems to be a really, really good paper. These are PSA rolls for for auto body uh, finishing guys. The the Merca is a really good, really good paper. Um, if you have an auto body finishing supply shop. You know where you can get paints, uh, stuff like that. You can probably find find stuff like this. This is Merca Gold. This is PSA as well, the pressure sensitive adhesive. You just peel this off, and, and it's essentially a, a sandpaper sticker. This 80 grit is is like crazy aggressive. Which that leads me into you're going to need some sort of implement to sand with. You'll hear some guys say, well, I just use my thumb. Well, that isn't going to cut it for, for how I do things. This is probably the the simplest option, and it will work well. This is just a, a bar of, of uh, tool steel. It's precision ground. It's clean. It's got some foam glued onto it to make it more comfortable. You can really do everything with that, but to <clears throat> to get the nicest finish in the end, it's nice to... to to do your last sanding strokes with something that has a little bit of give to to your backer material. This is made out of G10, which that, that's unimportant. The important part is is what you see here, this brick red color. This is just a plumbing gasket material. You can buy this stuff at, at just about any hardware store, and it's just super glued on there, and it just gives a little bit of give. I do not recommend you do all your sanding with that because it... Um, it does have a little give so it, it it will tend to wash out things that you want to be crisp and it'll kind of ride in and out of uh, divots and, and things like that and, and not give you a, a quite as clean of a finish. <clears throat> this is another option that's going to give similar results. This one is just something made out of wood and it's got some thin leather that's that's been glued onto it. Then Personally, I think you're going to want some sort of lubricant for the, the coarse grit stuff um, that's an oil base, like 3-in-1 works well. WD-40, especially if you can put it in a bottle like this so that you're not just spraying it all over your bench and your, your vice and stuff, that's really nice to have. Works well with mo <laughs> most of these papers, in my experience. Uh, for the higher grits and finer grit stuff, I, I like Windex and Simple Green just because they lubricate the paper. Uh, they make it so the paper will last longer, doesn't clog up with, with gunk. 
and also they don't they don't rust the steel which if you're using simple carbon steels like I do for the most part that can be an issue and you're gonna want want some good lighting lighting is very important this is a, a shop built fixture that I made that I can move all around the bench pretty easily this is actually just a cheap Walmart desk lamp that I uh, stuck on there and I've I've got the the 6500k daylight fluorescent bulbs in both of these this one here is actually a, a lot nicer much more expensive lamp this is an industrial gooseneck and you can see I scabbed together a little articulated arm so that I can move these around and and pinpoint the light I also have uh, high output fluorescent lights in the shop ceiling you're gonna need a solid bench a bench vise of of some kind you know I like like this one for a lot of stuff but you're just you're gonna need one of some sort to fixture the blade to work on it um, a piece of two by four will work fine for for clamping the the blade down onto, and then just a a clamp of some sort. I bought this pretty much just to show this in a video. I I got it for a few bucks at Harbor Freight. It's a cheapy four inch C clamp, but it it's plenty enough to to secure the blade to that um, board so that you can go ahead and start sanding. So that should get you started. Now before we go to town sanding this thing, I just want to remind you guys that this this is being geared towards you know newer makers. So you know if we were talking about long long time makers with a well equipped shop, of course my number one recommendation here would be that you you come over to your handwork with you know as close to as close to a perfect grind as you as you can get because that's that's going to be optimal. But we have to keep in mind if we're especially if we're talking about guys that are newer that there's going to be a big difference between what's what's optimal and what's realistic so uh, with that in mind you know you may not come off your grinder <clears throat> with a pristine blade but if you take pride in your work and you're willing to put in the the effort you know and bear down on this thing and uh, you know put some care into it there really shouldn't be any reason that you can't clean everything up, true everything up, make things symmetrical, and if you really follow through with everything, end up with a blade that is just as nice as anything that's out there. So, but you know, it, it's not going to be easy. You, you're going to have to work for it. But I just want to point out that that can be done. Okay, so we've got our blade clamped down securely. First thing I want to mention is, is safety. Now, with the sanding supports that I normally use, I'd be able to position this blade so that pretty much all this cutting edge is set back away, away from the board so it's not exposed. So that's definitely you know, a, dis, a disadvantage to just using a board like this. Uh, if you're really uncomfortable with it, you can always you know turn it the other way so you have more width to work with. Uh, you want to have the point away from the end of the board so that you're not going to stab yourself with it or walk into it. You definitely want to have it clamped down securely. Something that that I want to recommend, at least in my opinion, that you should not do is do your initial sanding like this in length with, with the blade. Any dips or waves that are in your blade uh, especially if you have a narrower sanding bar than this one you're just going to ride in and out of those and you're going to end up with a blade that has the same dips and waves in it that you started with they're just going to be shinier than when you started so the w way that I alleviate that I'm going to start with the real coarse the 150 PSA paper and just slap it on on the sanding bar there a little WD-40 to help make the paper cut better and last longer. And my angle of approach is I I sand at an angle, and that is maximizing my surface area contact <coughs> contact at at, the, at any given time. And so instead of it, the bar just wanting to ride in and out of dips, it's going to sand things true and and clean. 
and uh you know if you can hold the bar at at, at an angle i i think that helps us because it increases that that surface area now please keep in mind that the part of the reason i would want the surface area contact increased is because this is a coarse grind if you had a really perfect pristine uh, surface finish coming off your your grinder your disc grinder you could have a narrow surface area contact and it will it will sand faster but you you need that that better foundation to start with and since we're starting with the blade that doesn't have a, a perfect foundation then in, in my opinion in my experience this approach is going to be the best no you you may feel more comfortable doing your initial angle uh, opposing this one i'm left-handed so i don't know but this is just usually my initial one is is at this angle of approach and what i'm doing with this angle like i said the surface area contact but it's also making it extremely easy to read where i'm at and what i mean by that is the grinder scratches the grinder marks are all perpendicular to the length of the blade itself and so when I am sanding at an angle like this you're essentially just erasing those grinder marks and it's it's important that you do that because you want to make sure that you you don't stop sanding with with this grit I don't mean this necessarily this particular piece of paper, but with this grit until you have nothing but um, that particular um, grit of scratch at, at the, that particular angle on this entire surface. And you can, you can come off of an imperfect grind with a coarse grit like this, an aggressive, aggressive sanding like this, and you can really clean things up and true things up. Now I want to point out something that that I do kind of instinctively after a lot of years of doing this without really thinking about it. And it's especially important if you're doing it on a, a backer like this where you do have some, some edge exposed. Because as a lot of people know, I grind my, my cutting edges extremely thin, you know, right off the grinder it's not sharp but it could cut you I mean if you come under this aggressively it's definitely thin enough to cut you and if you come into it hard I mean you're gonna cut tendons and ligaments and you're gonna be in a world of hurt so so please don't do that but the thing that I wanted to point out is I am holding I'm holding this bar rigidly with this hand and it doesn't matter that I'm left-handed it's just because I'm sanding this side of the blade if I was sanding the other side, it would be the right hand. But I'm, I'm holding it most of the, of the pressure that I'm putting on this bar and holding onto it with <clears throat> is in the hand that is on the back side of the blade, on the spine side. This hand, if you'll notice, it's, I'm mostly just putting downward pressure with the meat of my hand and maybe kind of cradling it a little bit with, with my thumb. But I got my fingers out here where they're, they're not exposed to that that cutting edge where I had to come into it because like I said if you were the amount of pressure I'm putting on this as hard as I'm driving this thing back and forth if I were to <clears throat> have one of the, my fingers come into contact with that I, I would I would definitely be be hating it so you want to follow through with that and and like I said just don't stop until all those marks are gone and I'm not going to do that on a camera because it would it would take too long but it it's very doable and you can lay down what I would call your foundation finish and that will be 150 grit with this now I have the lighting set up in here really well for for me to see while I'm working on this stuff but uh with with the camera and stuff i'm sure that there's some things that i can see that you can't so i'm going to take this thing off take it outside in the direct sunlight and you know move it around for the camera try to <laughs> help show some of the stuff that's that's currently in there that needs to come out before we say that this particular uh, stage of the sanding is done
Now here, out in the direct sunlight, you can see some of these grind marks that are still in here. Um, a little bit of a facet right here. And it's just not a perfectly uniform surface or finish it, but the thing is, is if we go back and we clamp it down like that and we keep up with that aggressive paper and that sanding angle and approach, every bit of that can come out and end up with a nice, smooth, even, uniform bevel on this blade. Now, it's very important before you move on to the next grit that you really take this in, you know, in varying lights and really go over it really well to make sure that you have gotten all of your your previous grit scratches out. Um, you know, initially it's going to be your grinder marks. Following that, it's going to be whatever your your base sanding grit was. Most of us were guilty of doing this. You'll get tired of sanding it at a certain grit, and you're so anxious to move on and get the damn thing finished that there'll be a couple scratches, and you'll go, "Well, I'll get them out with the next grit," and you move on. It ain't gonna happen um, if you <laughs> if you give a crap about your work and trying to put out the best product that you can you're gonna have to get them out eventually and so if you move on when it's when it's not time to move on you're just gonna have to come back and fix it later so do yourself a favor even if you've moved on to the next grit and you've you know you've been sanding on it for 10 or 15 minutes before you notice it grit your teeth lose the 15 minutes go back to the previous grit get the the sanding scratch or mark out and then move forward because otherwise like i said you know if you don't care about the finished product it doesn't matter but if you're going to get it finished and go ah, there's a scratch in it how did I, you know and you're going to go back then you're going to be looking at you know a, a new guy starting out you might be talking about hours of sanding <laughs> you know um Obviously, you, you you know you whittle that time way down as you get more proficient at this stuff. But when you're first starting, you know it's going to take some time and elbow grease to get these things sanded. So you know, do yourself a favor, take it off of whatever you have it mounted to. You know, go to the light in your kitchen, your dining room, whatever. You know, take it outside, look at it at different angles, make sure that it's clean before you move on. Um, now assuming that that's where you're at with it, it's time to clamp it back down and move on to the next grit. Okay, so we did a bang up kick ass job sanding this thing with our, our 150 grit in the direction of these lines I put on here. Um, you know, it's going to be uniform and consistent and it, and it looks good. We've checked it. We're ready to move on. we got it clamped down. Now the ultimate way or optimal way, excuse me, to get this thing finished out to the next grit is to oppose the marks that we've already got in here like so. The reason for doing that, our initial marks are in here like this, we come back like this and when you have nothing but marks that are at this angle you know all of these are gone so that's what we want to do. Um, get your sanding stick you can use some 220 PSA paper again and you're going to come in here and you're going to sand this till you've got nothing but 220 grit marks running in that direction opposing your previous grit and uh, one thing to note there's been some question about getting up into the, the, the plunge when I'm sanding at an angle like this well this the simple physics of it you're going to get maxed out right around here so at that point you're going to have to turn your sanding bar perpendicular to the length of your blade and get up in there but you can still do the motion at that same angle so that all your sanding marks are consistent but i do try to ride up in there as far as i can at that angle just because like i said earlier you have the maximum surface area contact at one point you're you're gonna have a nicer smoother 
um, surface in the end. So once you get to there, then it's t time to move on to the next grit. And um, you know, in my humble opinion, a lot of guys starting off, they, they think shiny is the best. And so they wanna go up to as high grit as they can. You know, they're talking like 2,000, 2,500. A really well done, clean, low grit finish is going to look a hell of a lot better than a crappy, wonky, high grit finish. So, you know, I can put a 220 grit finish down. If it's nice and clean, it's going to look good. And people are going to see it and, and like it and respect it. You know, if you, like I say, you do a crappy high grit finish and it is going to look like a crappy high grit finish. So, I would recommend you either take it to 220 or 320. If you decide to go to 320, I re really recommend, you know, the the Redline Rhino Wet, the 320 grit. It will wrap around a sanding stick nice and tight. Um, this stuff cuts great. The 320, you know, uh, WD-40 or Windex, simple green, whatever, it works well as a lubricant. You, know, you don't have to use anything. You just get more life out of the paper if you do. At that point, you can go ahead and start sanding with the length of your blade. And initially, to help make this faster, you can just go back and forth. And since I'm sanding on this, one thing I, I meant to mention before is you do not want to just dwell in one area like this. You don't want to just dwell in one spot because the only reason to do that would be if you have a dip or a wave that you didn't get out at the grinder and or you didn't fix it with your initial foundation sanding so um, all you're like I said before all you're gonna do is you're gonna accentuate that and it's gonna pick up light and you know lights gonna play off that surface and it's just gonna scream <laughs> that there's a dip right there so so don't you know Make sure before you move on that each step is done right so that you're not, you know, you're not just polishing a, a crappy foundation. Now, once you get that to where it's nothing but 320 grit scratches, you know, for the full length of that, um, then you can start doing uh, what a lot of people refer to as straight poles. You're going to get get up here in the plunge and you're just going to use your body weight and pull straight back now this blade isn't ready to do that so it's not it's not going to look quite right but you just want to do that the straight pulls because the reason you don't want to just go back and forth and call it good is you'll have all these little swirly j hooks that are referred to as a a stop start because every time you stop and start in one direction it will show so you want to have nice clean pulls and one thing that I do I don't know if everybody does it you don't have you don't actually want to lay this right on the bevel you want to kick the heel I'm I'm exaggerating this but you want to kick the heel of your sanding paddle up so that you're making contact with the front part of your sanding stick and your sandpaper you have less contact area that way but it just allows you to to get a nice smooth pull and it allows you to get right up into the plunge and just draw it straight back and not have a bunch of stop starts now once you get to that point you're going to want to move on to some, i i think you'll get your best results if you move on to something that has some backing now one thing that you can do is just keep your your same bar and you can get some uh, gasket material and super glue it to one side of it to something that has a little bit of give uh, this is something that would be pretty simple for most guys to make this is a piece of piece of wood that's got some thin le leather glued down to it and this will give you just enough give that it will help you to get you know the a really nice surface finish for, for your final pulls now the reason it's shaped like this it looks pretty weird I realize but it's completely intentional because it allows me to wrap my sandpaper around here nice and tight 
the leading edge of my sandpaper is out here ahead of everything, ahead of my finger, so it's easy to see when I get up into this plunge and I pull straight back, I can see right where it's going. And you can also come in lightly from the tip, come up and basically just sort of flick it out of the plunge to help clean that up. But my, my final poles are always like this, nice and straight, nice and smooth. And that's going to give you a nice, clean, uniform finish. Now let's say you're ambitious and you're wanting to have a, a clip grind or even a sharpened clip on your blade. You're going to grind that in. Now with your this is the same as with your main bevel. If you start with a coarse grit, you can you can true this up cuz doing this you're essentially draw filing it is what you're doing, but you with the abrasive paper you can do that even with a hardened steel blade. Um you know, you can use an actual file to do it, but you're if you're using it on a hardened steel blade, you're going to wear out files in a hurry. The abrasive paper, you know, you can get that same effect and you can clean that all up. Now one thing some guys have had questions on is keeping this grind line sharp. That's where it comes right back to that whole opposing angle things. You know, if you're sanding your main bevel like this, when you go to sand your clip with, this, with that same grit, if you sand it at, at this direction so that those angles are opposing each other, it will be much easier to read that that line is staying crisp and read where you're at with your sanding to make sure that you are keeping this transition true and crisp. And I do not sand these both in the same direction until I'm at the very final stage of the, of the sanding poles because if if you just start off sanding these bolts like this, you're gonna wash that line right out. I mean, just the human body mechanics, it, it's just almost a guarantee you will wash it out. But if you do that at opposing angles with, with each progressive grit, you can make this transition very sharp and crisp and it will look really good. And, you know, same thing, the final pulls on this, nice and smooth, same direction, no stop and starts. If you do all these things that I have mentioned so far and you do it with some care, you are going to end up with a nice, clean, hand sanded blade. Hopefully, this helps some guys. Thanks for watching.